Hello, it's Duncan. Today we're going to continue our side hustle to become the one-stop shop for internet anagram generation. So far we've used approval to test for anagrams. Effectively we've examined the output for a given input, said that it's OK and that we don't want it to change. To be honest though, we haven't examined outputs for many inputs, nor checked that all of our approved 128,000 anagrams are legitimate. The more we optimise our code, the more we risk bugs slipping through nasty edge cases. And we don't want to be the one-stop shop for invalid anagram generation. ChatGPT already has that niche. So today we're going to look at property-based testing. Let's remind ourselves of the current test for correctness that we have. The first couple of nanogram tests here are of our internal implementation. Let's fold those away. After that, we have a very simple anagram, a cat, and we actually specify here what we expect to see out. But the meat of our test is this test for refactoring two, where we have an approver, and here we take our anagrams, we put one on each line, and we check those against this approved file. And if we get the same output as this file, then we pass. So this, you can see, has 128,870 entries in it. And to be honest with you, we haven't looked through all of those and checked that they are all plausible. In a property-based test, though, what we do is we generate anagrams and we look at properties of that output. And we check the property of that output holds for any input. And when I say any input, what we normally do is we end up generating random inputs in order to try and find errors that we might not have predicted in our normal tests. So let's create ourselves a new test. And we're going to call it anagram property tests. Now normally we'd create a test and we'd say at test fun some sort of test. But today we're going to use a different feature of JUnit and that's parameterized test. Let's go and have a look at the documentation. So here you can see we use a parameterized test and we give it some sort of value source. And then the parameters from our value source are handed to our test method as arguments to the method. So let's just take this and go back to our test. And we'll put that in there. And you can see that we don't know what parameterized test is. And that's because it needs another jar file from JUnit. So we need to import that in our build file. And here's one I prepared earlier. We'll load that. And now if we come back here, we can now import that. And now we don't have array literals in Kotlin, so we have to say array of. And then remember that we have our input here, so we put it as a string. And now to see what happens, let's just print the string in here and run these tests. And now it turns out the J unit isn't quite clever enough to notice that it has a parameterized test and a test here. So we need to remove that in order to get rid of this error. And now if you look at the test runner, you can see that we've created one test for each of the inputs. So we've got test one with race car, test two with radar, and test three with able, I was, era, so elba. So as we thought, it's fed these into here creating a test for each. Now our problem is anagrams, not palindromes, and this is too long for us to do in a reasonable time, I think. So I think we just shorten that for now. Now in property-based testing, we use each test to specify a particular property of the output that we want to be true. So can we think of a simple property of every anagram that holds true no matter what the input? Well, I think one of those is the number of letters. So in here we can say, has the same number of letters as the input. And now we generate the anagrams from our letters. Anagrams for input. And now for each one of those, we can say assert equals that the input length is the anagram length, where the anagram is the thing we're looping over. So let's have a look at that. Now, actually, I'm a bit suspicious of that pass because our anagram generation is able to insert spaces and they should change the length of the string. So I don't think this should actually be true. I suspect that we're not getting any anagrams at all. And so we're not asserting on anything. 
And I think the reason is because we're feeding in lowercase letters here. Now we could try and write a property-based test to show that we uppercase before we try and find things. But in this case, I think I'm just going to go back to anagram tests, duplicate this here and say, this should also work for lowercase a cat. And we don't need this depth in here, never did. Now if I run this test, that fails because we're not uppercasing. And we can go and fix up our code in here to say input uppercase replace. Run again. And so a little bit of formality has already filled in a gap in our functionality. I don't expect that to have broken any other tests, but we'll just run them to check. And we're good. I think we'll just commit that. Cope with lowercase input. And that is in fact just those two changes. We'll keep that separate for now. Okay. Now returning to this test, I think that may fail. It does, but you can see we have a problem here that we don't know the anagram that it was failing for. So we could put that in here as the message and run again. And here you can see that race car produced a arc rec, and that doesn't have the same number of letters, or rather it does have the same number of letters, but it doesn't have the same number of characters because of the spaces. So what we really want here is the input without spaces. Length is the anagram without spaces length. Let's make that happen by creating an extension function on string. Going to return string. And this is going to be this replace any space characters with no characters. Return that and try and run the tests. And there we are, our first property. I think we can commit that as first anagram property test and commit. Good. Now, if you're like me, you're probably feeling a little bit blind at this point because we haven't actually seen the anagrams that are being generated. In normal testing, we specify what we want to see in the test. And in approvals testing, we see what has been generated before we approve it. But here we're a little bit blind. I don't like that feeling, but I'm getting used to it. So let's press on. One of the reasons for unparameterized tests is to keep us honest with things that we might not really thought about. And so I'd like to add a couple of things to this list. One is a one letter word. And one is an empty input. This is Kotlin, we don't have to deal with null, but it would be good if every property we tested applied to those pathological cases. Let's just check that's true. And it is, so that's good. And we'll make sure to leave those in for all of our inputs for other properties. Just before we go on, I notice a little underline here, which says I should be using an array literal. I did not know they exist, but it turns out that inside annotations, we have an array literal syntax. OK, so moving on, what else can we say about every anagram that we generate? Well, I think one of the things is that all the words are in the dictionary. What does that look like? Well, it's sort of the same structure as this. But then for each anagram, we take the anagram and split it around space to get the words. And then for each of those, We want to check it's in the dictionary. And again, if that's not true, we'd like to know that word. So now we have two tests and we can run them all. And JUnit has tested each property against each input, giving us a separate test for each. So that if it was a failure, we could drill down into it to see what it looked like. Let's just have a look at what that would look like. We could say here, Anagrams for input plus, I don't know, something's not in the dictionary. And let's see how that would fail. And now you can see that each one of these tests has failed because each one has a word that's not in the dictionary and we're getting the normal assertion error from that. We're seeing the word though and not the anagram and the anagram will be useful to us. So I think maybe even here if we were to put banana and some word that's not there, and what we'd really like to see is an output that said word from anagram is not in dictionary. And we've run that. 
Now we get a good diagnostic. We can tell what our input was here, and we can tell what our problem was here. And we could do the same sort of thing in here, where our error would be anagram has the wrong number of letters. Remove that and run. Good. So now we have two properties and we're throwing one, two, three, four, five inputs at each. What we'd like to do though is test those properties against more inputs. And we can do that by specifying a different value source. There is a method source that we can give the name of a method. So I'm just going to say inputs and then we can make a method like that. And that can return a list of strings. And let's take these ones. And we'll go back here and make both of these take the method source. Try running that. Now, Jane, it complains that we can't evoke a non-static method. We can solve that problem by either making this static, which means putting in a companion object, or as we have no state in our test at all, we can change the tests to only have one instance. So we can say test instance lifecycle per class. And if we run that, then we get the same test run as before, but now we can add code in here to generate whatever we like. So now what kind of input should we use? Well, our dictionary is an obvious source of input. So let's add in a hundred random words from the dictionary. So it would be one to a hundred map words random. Let's try that. This will take some time. And in fact, maybe too long because there are lots of long words in the dictionary which take too much time. Let's kill that. Let's give ourselves some short words to use. So my short words, words, filter, hit.length is less than six, let's say. And then in here, we'll use our short words. Try that. And there we have it, 210 tests passed. If we look at the top few tests here, we went to token, do, and buy. And here we went to touch, or bar and berg, the different properties are being tested with different random inputs. That may or may not suit us. I think probably here it doesn't suit us. So let's go back. And if we take this computation and make a field out of it of random short words, then we'll use the same words every time. So this is smash, and there's smash again there. Okay, now we can use these words in another property, and that's going to be that the input and the anagram had the same letters. So let's duplicate this, and we say input and anagram have the same letters. We go to each anagram, and we know that we can find the letters by taking them and sorting them. So we can say cert equals the input without spaces to character array sorted should be equal to my anagram without spaces to character array and sort this. And I'll run just this one. Now that's failed 105 tests because we didn't notice the case, but it's also given us an opportunity to get a better error message. So we'll put that in here and that is going to be anagram does not have the right letters. Run to check the error message. And now you can see what we've got out. And here we'll do uppercase to get us passing. Good. So from here on, it's a question of our creativity in finding properties and our creativity in crafting inputs. Another property might be that when we start with words in the dictionary, we expect to have an anagram with those words in. So that is parameterized test with our method source inputs. And this is going to be anagram contains input words. In fact, exactly one anagram contains the input words. What does that look like? Well, very much like this. 
We'll take our anagrams. Oh, we need to remember to specify the input. It's a string. Now we'll take our input words in alphabetical order, which is the input, uppercase, split by space, sorted. And now we'll take our anagrams, filter by it, split on a space, sorted, equals the input sorted, and then it should be exactly one of those. Let's find out. Well, that's failed. First of all, it looks like race car is not in our dictionary. And also our output anagram can't contain the empty string here. We can fix the first of those by removing race car. And for the second case, we have assume. So we can say here, assume true input is not blank. And now if we run that, you'll see we've got a test output, but the test didn't fail. So that allows us to discard inputs for a particular property, which comes in quite handy in cases like this. Just tidy up. And now we might expand our input by concatenating words. So we could do three letter words and say, we'll take the ones that are, in fact, let's say up to three letters. And then we could add in random word pairs, which would be up to three letter words, random plus a space plus another random one. If we pick 50 from here and 50 from here and add those in here, I think probably we will get rid of those and call this pathologicals. There we go. So now each one of our properties is tested against A, the blank string, some shortish words and then some shorter word pairs. And all of our properties are true for all of those inputs. Finally, if we look in the documentation here, you see that we can provide multiple arguments by returning a collection of arguments. We can use that in our code to speed things up. Every one of our tests here is finding anagrams for the input. So we could calculate that in our inputs. What we do is we'd say, let's take all of the words we're currently passing in and then map that to arguments of it and words anagrams for it. And now each one of these can declare a parameter of anagrams, which is a string. So if I take that, I can delete that, delete that, put that in there. And here. And here. Don't need to do that. Don't need to do that. And the thing that I messed up here is that this should be list of string. So let's take all of those and make them list of string. Let's see whether that works. Well, it passes, but it will still in fact be calculating this every time. So now we can take this and make it into a value of inputs. Take that and put it down here. And if we run that, We should have reused all the calculations. And I think that change might allow us to have random word triples. Well, we'll add in another one. And we'll just cut these down to 30 each. Fix that and add these into here and run. Well, maybe that's a bit too slow, but you get the gist. Sophisticated implementations of property-based testing are very clever generators of parameters that allow them to backtrack when they find an issue and find the simplest input that will reproduce that issue. We don't have that here. We're generating the inputs ourselves, but that gives us lots of flexibility and allows us to tailor what we have to our particular algorithm. Personally, property-based testing isn't a technique I reach for as I'm writing the code in the first place, but as we've seen here, it's a good way of checking the correctness of what we've written and can come in very handy if we're doing large-scale refactorings to a piece of code. We do have to be careful, though, because we've chosen random words here, that our tests may only fail sometimes, and if they do fail, and in particular if they fail in continuous integration, we're going to have to make sure we have enough diagnostic information to reproduce the problem. In this case, the test names being the input should be enough. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, and you already have a ticket to Cotton Conf in April, it may not be too late to book onto the TDD workshop that I'm running with that price the day before the conference. If you want to see more of this, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you like my work, then please consider buying the book that I wrote with Nat called Java to Kotlin, a refactoring guidebook, details of which are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.